sister's obsession with my ex led her to set us up behind my back. Now, with my own family on the way, I'm finally cutting ties. When I was 16, I started seeing my best friend. Together until I graduated from high school, he proposed and I turned him down. My family asked me to rethink, as we may have a lengthy engagement or pledge to reunite, and there was much turmoil with them. For a while, my relationship with my 36-year-old brother weakened. The one with my sister, who is 32, never recovered. She got intolerable when she started dating my ex's brother as she was confident my ex was the ideal fit for me. My siblings invited my ex everywhere, including several family holidays, but I said nothing since he was their friend as well. That is until my sister started advocating for our reunion. No matter the circumstance, my sister tried everything from try to arrange for us to share a room during holidays to setting us on blind dates. One invited my ex to it. I had enough after a time and urged my parents to step in. They stopped inviting my ex to events or letting him tag along so much and were upfront with my siblings. It was only marginally better, but while my brother withdrew, my sister did not. It all came crashing when I ran across my husband on a semester abroad. We simply clicked even though he attended another university, but from a different nation. For me, it was fantastic. We started dating a year ago. Except for my sister, my family was really glad for me. She persisted in saying I would grow out of the honeymoon phase. I obviously didn't and I would quit talking to her if she pulled anything else after many, many battles and tried to get me back with my ex. After that caution, what does she do? She appoints one of her friends as my husband's date, asks me to spend all my time with the bridal party, aka my ex, and makes me her maid of honor. The poor girl tried to pass at my husband, and we didn't know until we were at the reception. Since we are not married, my sister stated it was acceptable to explore things with others. I left the celebration, and the next day I chatted with my brother and parents. I said that although I won't force them to make decisions, I will not interact with my sister ever again and will cut off all communication with them should they try to mend things between us. While my dad and brother indicated they would support my choice, my mom was distraught and sought to compromise. Apart from two tries from my mother, over six years I haven't spoken, written, or anything with my sister. From gifts to tantrums, my sister has tried everything to mend with me, but I hardly interact with her at all. If we're at a family dinner or gathering, I just pretend she doesn't exist. She tried to generate drama or made snide remarks at first, but she gave up when nobody supported her. She would not be involved in any planning even though she did have a meltdown upon learning she was invited to my wedding. According to my brother, his relationship with my ex has worsened subsequently, and he feels bad for continuing along for so long. Though they are not as close now, they still talk. The problem? Forward slash forward slash, I finally said we are having our first child. My mom's birthday was several weeks ago. Though my first granddaughter, this is not the first grandchild. Except my sister, everyone was really delighted. My mother observed that and asked me for tea one other day. Though my sixth sense warned me not to attend, I wanted to be optimistic. When I arrived, my sister's automobile caught my first attention. Then there was my sister, her husband, my ex, and his lunch as I walked in the door. Since my childish approach has lasted for so long, they wanted to intervene. My ex said he was merely trying to be romantic, but he realizes I wouldn't value it. His mother apologized already. I should forgive her since I was only hurting his sister for wanting the best for me. I was just texting my dad, brother, hubby and looking at my mom incredulously. My brother-in-law had the guts to tell me I was a nasty person and I should learn how to act like an adult since I am now pregnant. My mother then started reading a letter about how hurt her daughters weren't close, how my sister was wrong but she was well-intentioned etc. My sister then read her letter, started to cry and told me essentially another form of what the others did. I sat there until my brother showed up. I said nothing to anybody. Beyond anything I have ever seen, he was furious. He took my items and informed them all he was truly disgusted and disappointed. We left and remained in his car until my dad and husband showed up. By then I was just crying and he kept apologizing. I'm not sure what occurred there, but I emailed everyone except mom including my lawyer's contact details attached and said I never want to be bothered by any of them ever again. Should they, I will report it to the police. Nobody has got in touch, but my dad told me from experience that my mother and sister are hysterical. They assured him they hoped to fix things and for my sister to be in my baby's life, maybe even acting as a godmother. Right now my dad is living with my brother. While some family members don't, others help me. Since my sister is now following the narrative that my husband is keeping me away from my family, I have even had mutual acquaintances phone me concerned about her well-being and asking me what happened. Although I detest having my business open to the public, I did follow the public path and shared a lengthy Facebook post about everything that happened. Though it wasn't exactly planned, I believe my sister, brother-in-law, and ex are deserving of dragging. Now my mother has been inconsolable, which makes me uncomfortable, but not as horrible as she made me feel with her little intervention. A few days ago, I agreed to meet with her and set the ground rules for any future contact, including therapy, family therapy, explicit boundaries, no sharing of information about me with my sister and separate holidays. 
Above all, she will definitely be cut off should she ever do anything similar once more. She is ready to do it, even though she feels this is excessive. She believed it meant instant access to baby news and that it was all fixed, but I explained to her it is a process and she has to show she has changed. My dad and brother continuously apologizing for not halting their refusal to interact with my sister earlier. Since they were able to go on and flourish, we have forgiven them. Though my Amiel is dubious, if cutting my mom's access to her grandchild is the best course of action, my husband supports whatever I decide upon. She feels it is finally my choice. About what to do with my mom, I'm conflicted. Commenter. What is their rationale now that you are expecting? Should you quit acting out make-believe with your husband and come to see your happily ever after resides with your ex? Regarding your child, what? Will your ex and his family welcome her? Oop. Although my sister says she is not trying to bring us together anymore, I cannot take away her opportunity to be an aunt. She stated I'm a poor sister since I spend so much time with my fantastic sisters-in-law. Of course, I disagree with her. My problem is knowing what to do with mom. Commenter. She wouldn't be your best friend without you dating your ex-oop stands for. Though I wish I could tell you, I have no idea her mental processes. My spouse believes she is simply psychologically sick. The ex, he still owns the mixtapes and CDs I created for us while we were dating, which is the most ludicrous and terrifying thing. He still finds great value in those objects, which are roughly 20 years old. Commenter. I'm kind of amazed your stalker ex and yes, I will call him that, is still in your brother's life. Said another way, hold strong with your mother. No deadlines. She must prove she can follow your guidelines. Your sister has to live with the results of her deeds. Oop. To be fair to my brother, he did start to cut him off when I informed my parents I was somewhat uncomfortable with my ex always there. I lived away for college but would see my family on breaks. He also worked very hard to make my husband welcome, which degraded his relationship with my ex even more since he felt betrayed by my brother. My husband is one of my brother's closest friends nowadays. He only talks to my ex about our nephew or to avoid being nasty. Commenter. You have to understand that your mother is endorsing all of this. She knows your mom also believes it's appropriate. Therefore, a major reason Big Sis is ongoing this. This makes me somewhat depressed since my mother was always so friendly to my husband, and now I'm questioning their whole relationship. For some background, neither Indian nor from a religious family are we. My parents were decent, polite ones. At first, they considered it to be a romantic thing, but subsequently came to see it wasn't. They pushed me to start college and all around. Now, I know my dad really helped me and my mom might have just followed along and had the ideas as my sister. My sister suggested that we would be best friends with the brothers. Update 1. Same day, 16 hours later. The modification I wanted to post but couldn't. I want to thank you for the so far great support and guidance. Since there are too many for me to personally address, I would like to add a bit more information in my remarks. I broke up with my ex when I was 18. He is 47 today. Our separation sprang from my unwillingness to be engaged or married. The fixation of my sister on wanting both of us to be best friends and brides drives her insistence. Although my mother has always been rather kind to my husband, I am starting to believe it was all a show, which makes me rather depressed. Although he has two children with an ex and has been with other people since the separation, my ex has never been married. Given he has only ever wanted to marry me, my sister feels that is a really romantic thing to do. I should also emphasize that his compulsive actions go beyond myself. From the grapevine, I know he was quite similar with his children's mother. Now he is focusing on me since my sister is supporting it since she wants his help in returning me to my good graces, so she can be a good aunt. When I informed my parents I was somewhat uncomfortable with my ex always there, my brother did start to cut him off. I lived away for college but would see my family on breaks. He also made a very great effort to make my husband welcome, which degraded his relationship with my ex even more since he felt deceived by my brother. My husband is now among the closest friends of one of my brothers. He only talks to my ex over our nephew, the son of my sister, or to avoid being nasty. Although I suppose only my dad was in agreement, both of my parents seemed to be encouraging of my not wanting to be around my ex so much. We would enjoy quality time together, thus my mom told my dad she was making my preferred tea and cookies on the day of a tea party, but he could remain. Thinking it would be a great sentiment from my mom, my dad left to hang with my uncle. Right now he is really irate. When they met, my husband tried very hard with my sister. Now he simply dismisses her and thinks she is mentally sick. Though we don't know whether she is or not, her behavior cannot justify anything. Their official perspective is that it would be best for me to confront the core of my problems with my sister. Hence they invited the ex and his mother. Furthermore, my spouse and I are from the same race. We are not really religious, neither Indian. Neither my ex nor my spouse have any financial differences. If such exists, it would benefit my husband. Finally, the circumstances infuriate my sisters-in-law, both the wife of my brother and the sisters of my spouse. My husband's sisters, and he will be discussing her comment with their mother. My brother and his wife are debating permanently cutting off all communication with my mother. They would let her visit my nephews for a while in between either. 
The more I read the more I believe I might have to go no contact with my mother for the benefit of my child. Thinking all their interactions were phony breaks my spouse, and he becomes even more angry that she made me doubt I was a nice person. Although I know my family still has a lot of talks to go concerning my mother, I will surely be getting a restraining order against my sister and the ex. Here is the appropriate semi-update on the current situation of my family. My mother said she knew better even after we spoke. She claimed I am a nasty person and that she will be obtaining either custody or rights pertaining to grandparents. Though I am nothing like what she describes, I still panicked, so we wrote her a letter about it. Moving permanently, my dad informed her he could stand by her terrorizing his child. Also choosing to go no contact are my brother and his wife. Though I understand it appears somewhat abrupt, I believe I understated the degree of hopelessness I experienced following the intervention. Later on, my husband advised them to consider very carefully what they valued and to be friendly and open to everything but would not raise a child in a poisonous environment. Reason 3,271,637. I love my hubby for this. My mother and her fakeness really break my hubby. She will never get anything from him, he says, which is as much retribution he wants. My Emil was informed about her comment by my husband and sisters, who also helped her to see why it was rather out of line. She is, as many of you would guess, a very devoted mother from a lovely family. My dad and brother keep atoning for any part they contributed to this. It astounds my dad that we have reached this position. For him, he claims, everything is still strange. Still, they claim they are ready to assist me in battling any foolish struggle my mother or sister might muster and back me no matter what. Update 2, I would like to thank you for the nice words and encouragement. I chose to publish it here so it wouldn't be removed as the original was. Though they are both wonderful and terrible at the same time, I am trying to keep upbeat about everything. Sitting my nephews down, my brother and his wife told them grandma was sick and tried to hurt Andy Diamond and the tiny cousin. Grandma might not be living with them anymore, they said, but that does not mean she loves them less. Though the kids are smart, it was really difficult. Although Auntie is no longer in their life, they do not care as they hate her, not because of me alone but rather because she is not exactly great with them either. When she was told my mother lost it and began asserting she had rights and she would be able to visit her grandkids. Mostly because of my brother's Amiel coming to visit, my dad is looking for a permanent apartment but will stay with us until January. We have a space. He is quite depressed. He has contacted divorce attorneys, moved bank records, etc. already. My mother has been sending him innumerable emails, messages and calls, but he responds to nothing. He was advised not to block her right now by the lawyer. He thought about maybe forgiving her, but a few days after my last post here I had a significant increase in blood pressure since she chose to visit my house with his sister. Though my mom knew I didn't want her there and my sister had never visited my house, I suppose that doesn't matter now. Knowing my mom, the cleaning girl let them in. I haven't had time to let her know, she was not allowed to enter anymore. I observed the automobile, while I was returning from some errands. I skipped this time as well. I phoned every relative, and my sill, husband sister, was the one closest by. She challenged them, and warned them either they left or I would call the cops on them for trespassing. They went and I started to feel ill. When we visited the doctor, they advised me that all the excitement was not good and that I should start unwinding or else the baby would suffer. Along with my brother, uncle, and husband, my dad headed home carrying every single item he could have thought of. According to my husband, my sister was also present and kept yelling at him that he wrecked her family. My dad told my mother and sister they nearly killed the infant, and he also wants not to interact with any of them once more. Though it is not happening, my sister kept messaging my brother begging for aid. Since his mother has some crazy beliefs, my nephew is losing so much of his family. Hence, I am devastated and somewhat sad for him but it is what it is. Regarding the custody and grandparent rights my mother wishes to exercise so much, my attorney wrote her a letter declaring she harmed the kid and my health and declaring, should she continue to harass me, it will become official legal business. Using her harassing of me as justification, my brother also sent her a letter. My mother and sister have both turned down attending treatment. Although they may be mentally sick, given all of this comes to light, it is clear they have long-standing agreement. Spending holidays with my family, maintaining health, and attending therapy will be my main priorities. Update 3. Hi, I figured it would be a good fit as I had some time and had several requests for an update. From the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you for your comments, letters, and every piece of advice since we owe you for making us even more cautious than we were. A few asked me what process we utilized to find the baby's gender. After 20 weeks, I announced it. We wanted to be sure and feel comfortable about the announcement. Hence we waited so long because we had experienced a loss in the past and we were ready to share it. We were also stupid enough to believe it would be especially meaningful for my mother. I sent it to my husband after publishing, and he spent a few days reading your comments, mails and advice. We cleaned the house and fortunately discovered nothing, but we still felt somewhat vulnerable and so visited a motel with my dad. Then we discovered a tracker on the vest of my fur baby, 
He has a humorous vest since he is a pretty small dog and gets cold a lot. I never would have considered checking there, but we found the tracker when my dad took him around the hotel grounds. My sister approached him about me and reconciliation. We moved since I was somewhat offended. We are fortunately able to afford it. Not merely empty. We are renting our former house as well as right now. That house used to be my favorite, but today I feel it's destroyed and contaminated in some sort. Sadly, not just me, but also my brother, spouse, dad, and even the family of my husband feels the same about their residence. We changed our numbers, acquired new devices, and let friends, companies, and the police know. We began family and therapeutic sessions as well. Nevertheless, I have really forgiven my dad and brother. They still feel great shame about the circumstances. We are healing as a family nevertheless. Mom and sister argue they don't need therapy and they are not wrong. My dad created a new will whereby my sister's son receives a trust fund and some inheritance but my sister receives a nominal sum. He really is done with her. Though I felt awful for her, I resolved to concentrate on my baby. She is here, we are blessed. Since my mother is no longer with me, this is not the experience I considered. Yet many friends and relatives have really surprised us. Eventually, we were so worried that we began testing some people we knew nothing about by telling them I was about to go into labor. It worked like magic. We cut off those who were still providing information to my mother and sister. When we clarify the thinking, the rest made sense. We have been having a torrid affair because of my undying love for the baby. Thus my ex, who my friends now call Bates, went around stating the baby was his. Nobody believes him now, but it caused my husband to call Bates's company and inform him of all the madness. Long story short, Bates was suspended while internal review was under progress. Given their request for more and more information and their seeming contrition, I nearly guarantee he will be let go. My mother has searched for us, but none of the people who know of our whereabouts have contacted her either. Her dad's attorney wrote her a letter saying that since she is unstable, all letters will now go via attorneys. Just my dad and myself since I felt so horrible for him being by himself. I still feel terrible even though he has assured me he will be alright and that nothing is my fault. In the world, he has been the best diaper changer, feeder and babysitter. As usual, my nephews are loving. My dad even visited the son of my sister. She started creating films threatening to injure herself if my husband stopped isolating her from the family, thus this came about. She seems to have stopped it when my dad emailed her regarding visiting her son and advised her he would call the police about her threats. Finally someone mentioned that I gave Bates false hope. That cannot be more far from reality. I spent years uncomfortable since I assumed he would move on. After I spoke out and saw my husband, I spent a lot of time berating my sister over it. I married after my sister as I had a long engagement. Though I still love my mother and sister, I put a good life for my family and me over that affection. Over this entire process, I have come across a great deal of compassion, love and loyalty. Strange as it sounds, I feel happy that all of this exploded. Hopefully it is not too tangy. Many hugs from me. Update 4. My dad moved into the guest house when we formally settled into a new house. We concluded that although it would be great for him to be with us, we all still need our space after many conversations. In and outside of therapy. We will be choosing what to do with the previous place later. We are still renting it now. About three times a week now, my dad has grandchildren all gathered around. She refuses to allow him to have the child until she knows where he lives which, to be fair, is a typical thing. But considering she is insane we do not want her around. He still needs to see my sister's child separately. Mom objected to the lawyers about how unjust it is. Though little she can do about it, my dad still gets to visit every grandchild. My dad informed me he had a confession around a month ago and dear reader, my stomach started hurting. She still lets him see me since he pays for my nephews sister's child, tuition and babysitting. Not wanting to keep secrets, he felt so bad for hiding it. I told him to relax and that there was nothing wrong with it. My dad received an email on Mother's Day with a link to an Instagram account with a somber video on my mother and how most of her family has deserted her, as well as how much of a saint my sister is for being there for her. Though I just forwarded it to the attorney, it was truly pitiful and infuriated me. Dad formally asked for divorce in May, and the procedure is still underway. I believe that's final as my dad said he would sooner drink bleach than go back to her and my mom insists he is mistaken. My dad was given Father's Day by my brother and husband, who had a great time. That day, my sister uploaded a lot of items but we wanted dad to enjoy the day, hence we blocked him from ever knowing about it. They also went to a hotel, got a suite, and set up a tent in the middle area for the kids and a little tippy for the infant on a camping trip with them. To be honest, one of the finest things I've ever done is have a baby. Witnessing my husband be the wonderful father I knew would make me very happy. Though it is demanding, we have a lot of help. I have my rocks at my side. Thus I am thankful beyond everything. My sister's in-law, and I now have a little calendar for sharing age-appropriate activities for the children. If they so want, we let them know they do not need to hang out with individuals they dislike and that their voices count. We have tiny get-togethers, brunches, etc. 
Right now, they are all fixated on the infant and claim to be her defenders. To be honest, without my sister present, family time is now a delight rather than a chore. She simply saps the enthusiasm from the room. I know it's awful to say. Along with staying in the guest room roughly once a week, my meal enjoys spending time with a baby. She replied gently that she wanted nothing from the infant for sleepovers or anything. She respects and listens to me and sure, I have broken down occasionally as I miss my mom a lot. I miss the mother I had or believed I had, not the one who informed me I would be a nasty woman or awful mother. According to my therapist, it's a marathon and to keep the positive first, about good, Bates was like oh. Not only that, but his industry's reputation suffered nuclear-level harm as well. So was his brother's, but he still has his job as far as I know since Bill is not in an industry that gives reputation much thought. About his hurt, how I'm denying him what is his, and how my husband is so intimidated by him that he had to go and professionally destroy him since he cannot ruin anything else, Bates sent me a 12-page, double-sided, single-space letter. I say seems as my lawyer reviewed it and sent me a synopsis. I did not read it. The grapevine also told me no, I don't ask anyone, they just tell me since they know he is stalking me, that the mother of his children relocated and he didn't even care and stated it was for the best. This man wants to play family with the baby and me and hardly gives his children any thought. Mommy already let him move back in with her, hence sadly he won't be homeless or anything. I doubt he will learn anything from this. Not the most flashy update but rather just what is. Oh, and with my dad's okay, my spouse burnt or donated every single item my mom or parents handed him. Even with memories, he believes, life is too short to allow her room in his life. Commenter. I am rather happy you are visiting all that with the intact good portions of your family. I appreciate Bates is a nasty guy, but has he ever done anything relevant or connected to his work? I truly don't see the firing component. Oop. It's a really close-knit one, and when you have a bad reputation, it shocks you. He is not giving up his business. Before this, he was considered as a good but detached feminist single dad. He even informed certain colleagues that I stayed with him for more than our scheduled visit. Commenter. OP, I have respect and am sorry for what you faced. I am reading your entire story from the best of Reddit from my house in India at 1.30 a.m. as healthy and pleasant as you both are. I hope your child develops to be as well. Also, I hope this whole mess ends soon so you may be back with your mother following the end of her XF dream. Respect you, keep fighting. Oop. That's a great attitude, but I will never chat to my mom once more. I miss her a lot. I shed a lot of tears. The baby deserves the greatest family we can offer, and my mother is not part of it. She is not the person I thought she was. Though I have to safeguard the baby, it hurts, 